What's an obvious sign someone's American? According to the CIA, when training to be a spy, you have to unlearn how to lean. Americans tend to lean on things when standing still. If you have time to lean, you have time to clean. The CIA. Turns out my boss is CIA. Walked into a bar in Australia. Ordered a drink and then the bartender noticed I was American. I asked, was it the accent or my choice of Budweiser drink? He said, because you're the fattest guy I've ever seen in my life, mate. When I lived in Europe, people said only Americans eat while walking. I'd be eating a bagel or something on the way to work or class and multiple people asked if I was American. My partner's Italian mother absolutely couldn't get over the idea of seeing people walk around holding coffee, especially iced coffee. Long coffees instead of espresso are weird enough, but the idea of sitting at a cafe and not just finishing your coffee before you leave is. It's very weird. Sitting, soaking in some sun for two minutes while chatting and drinking your espresso is common practice for me, and it feels very revigorating. A British man once told me he knew I was American because I was wearing a baseball cap backwards. An Italian told me they could tell I was American because I wore my sunglasses on the top of my head when I wasn't using them. Bonus points if you put them on top of the bill of your ball cap and rock a goatee. Tactical sunglasses. Sounds like my dad. He even has a dark platinum wedding ring that he describes as tactical. Waffles are tactical pancakes. Y'all. It used to be predominantly used by us in the southern states, but I've noticed it getting more popular in the other parts of the US. I'm a Yankee New Yorker, and I use it all the time. It is just the best way to say you all. As an American, I was expecting to get roasted in these comments, but after reading them, I can only laugh and agree. Laugh very loudly while leaning. I've realized how much I lean, but I thought that was a lazy slash bad posture thing. I had no clue it was a part of my culture. When they say Europe, it could mean anything from Venice to Doncaster. I visited Europe last summer. Yes, in one week, I should add. I don't know how true it is, but when I was in a hostel in Japan, we met a guy from France, I think. But anywho, at some point he mentioned he could tell we were from the USA. He said it was because we talked loudly like our normal speaking volume was louder. And now I can't help but notice that sometimes when I speak to someone from a foreign country, I do feel like I talk louder than them. I saw two American guys play catch on a basketball court in my neighborhood. They were standing on opposite sides of it and speaking to each other with no exertion or shouting it out, just like it's a normal distance to talk. And I heard both of them perfectly well from the other side of the street. Never heard of such a thing before or after. Never get stuck in an enclosed space with Filipinos if Americans are your version of loud. From what I've been told by European friends and travelers, our complete and utter lack of an indoor voice. I've lived in America for 25 years, and it still irritates me that instead of lowering their voices in restaurants so everyone can hear, Americans just scream over each other and make their restaurants as loud as clubs doesn't help so many restaurants will blast music or the TV at concert level decibels. Your only recourse is to keep upping your voice so you can actually have a conversation at your table, thus creating a cascading effect of everyone shouting over everyone else. The gentle grins you give to strangers if you make eye contact with them as you pass by, at least in the Midwest, was not well received in Germany. Big city, don't. Small town, sure. Born German. Thanks for upvoting my guide on greeting. I will put that on my CV. That's how it is in most US cities as well. I might give a head nod to another guy, but that's about it. The retail worker here, not living in the US, I can generally spot an American because they greet me with, hey, how are you? And since I usually have the standard tired from life retail worker expression, at first, I thought they were mocking me. So I didn't know how to react. It took me a while to realize they weren't really expecting an answer. Mind you, might just be my personal experience, but it happened too many times for it to be a coincidence. Not a coincidence in the US, we're basically trained to have these meaningless pseudo-friendly interactions with retail workers. If we walk into a store, a worker will greet us and ask how we're doing. The only acceptable reply is, fine, how are you? And then we move on to shopping. It's true, cashiers are expected to be almost comedically over the top friendly and helpful, and customers are supposed to respect that sacrifice by pretending to care for half a second. Then when the transaction is complete, we flash blindingly excited grateful smiles at each other, expressing a variant of have a good day and thanks you too, 
before disengaging. It's rude if you don't do these things. Hey, how are you? It's really funny at the doctor's office. The doctor comes out. How you doing? Oh, can't complain. Walks back to the exam room. So, how are you feeling? Proceeds to spend the next 30 minutes complaining. Unironically, one of my favorite parts of America. My doctor once asked me how I was feeling and I reflexively said, I'm fine, you? He chuckled and said, no you're not or you wouldn't need an appointment. Couldn't argue with that logic. When they come at you with their Italian heritage. I'm Irish too. I worked as a cashier in a tourist place in Paris. I always recognized Americans because they were kind of friendly to me and they always left tips. I guess there are worse things than being friendly and generous. My host dad in Japan noticed I was getting overheated at the kotatsu while we were having lunch, and I didn't say anything. He said to me, Americans are so polite. I was shaking after getting crapped on constantly by all the other foreign students. The accent usually gives it away. What are y'all supposing that means? Americans all talk like foghorn leghorn apparently. When they claim to be 1 8th German, 1 8th Irish, 1 16th Scottish, 1 16th Spanish, 3 8 French, and 1 4th Canadian. Please, we're not that smart. Half German, half Irish, half Scottish on my father's side, half Spanish on my mother's side, and my great grandma was a Cherokee princess. I was told I was Cherokee on my mom's side, but we weren't on the rolls. I'm from Oklahoma, so lots of people are on the rolls because she denied her ethnicity to stay married to her white husband. Turns out everyone I know has a variation of this same story. They want ice in their water. In Salzburg, I went to grab something from the drugstore. As I was checking out, I said hello to the cashier, thinking there was very little difference between how I said it and how Austrians said it. She immediately started speaking to me in English, and I asked her how she knew I spoke English. She deadpan stared at me in the eye and went, Hello! I just about died laughing since I'm a very stereotypical friendly American that says hello exactly like that. One of my favorite memories from that trip. I definitely read your hello like Mrs. Doubtfire. To be fair, I've said the US or America to people in foreign countries asking where I'm from. And they always said, yeah, obviously, but where in the US? Exactly. I live in Spain and this is what happens to me 100% of the time. It's always underwhelming when I say Idaho and they just reply with, oh, because they've never heard of it and it's not that interesting of a state for conversations unless they want to talk about pretty mountains and lakes. They measure things in inches and yards and talk about the weather in Fahrenheit. I live in the UK and I've gotten the hang of all the measurements except Celsius. Telling me the temperature in Celsius makes absolutely no difference to me because I won't know if it's hot or cold. An Italian told me that Americans walk confidently in the wrong direction. I had a boss who was an F-18 pilot. He said to go as fast as you can if you think you're lost. You'll either get where you're going or find out you made a mistake sooner. I played in a high school jazz band and the conductor's advice was, if you're not sure, just play it loud. A wrong note played quietly seems unsure and draws attention. A wrong note played loudly sounds like intriguing and challenging music. To quote a Latvian woman I met at a hostel, you hear them coming like thunder. More often than not, if they're talking and laughing louder than everyone else, they're American. I love my American neighbors. Sorry if I sounded rude. Canadians are also pretty loud when we get going. And New Yorkers are a different breed. Their regular talking voice absolutely booms over everything else. Makes sense when you have to be heard over the 1000 decibel noise pollution. I remember in one of my animal behavior classes we learned that birds in New York are significantly louder than members of the same species outside of the city. It's not our fault. We live in a loud hell. In my home stay in London, I was told that I was so American for enjoying a piece of cake for breakfast. Not frosted cake, but like nuts and dried fruit spiced coffee cake kind of thing. Apparently that's exclusively for like a 4pm snack, and breakfast is more of a savory meal. That's true. A lot of American breakfast items in my mind are desserts. Pancakes, muffins, waffles, etc. Doesn't mean I won't eat them, but it's kind of weird to do so. As an American, when I think of breakfast it's pretty much either hash browns, or the bacon and eggs combo. Sweet breakfasts are more of an occasional thing, but some people do eat them. An inordinate amount of small talk unprompted. This is definitely dependent on where in America. Midwesterners love small talk, but in other areas it's frowned upon. I've noticed this as I've traveled myself from the Midwest and everyone seems peeved. 
I don't want to make small talk while I'm running errands or have places to go. I go to the bar or other social places to make small talk with strangers. It's definitely a difference in manners, as it's seen as rude here to hold people up for longer than necessary when going about a daily task. They smile at strangers. We had a Japanese exchange student once, and one day we went for a walk. I said hi to everyone we passed by, and she was amazed. Do you know them? No? Then why did you say hi to them? Then she insisted it was going to be her turn to say hi next time because she wanted to try it. Afterward, she said it was so much fun. How much personal space do they give themselves? Americans like at least an arm's length. We're conditioned to fill spaces evenly. I noticed when I worked delivery spending lots of quality time on elevators that for every new person that enters, everybody shuffles to even things out. A similar thing plays out in social gatherings and bars. Not sure if that's universal or not, but I find it interesting. I think the size of our personal bubbles is because our spaces are generally much larger because we've got the space to build bigger buildings, sidewalks, roads, etc. It might also explain why we're louder. Used to fill in larger spaces with volume. Athleisure clothing. One American I've met was a bit stereotypical in some regards. He was on a biking tour from Sweden to Palestine, had an unusual beard, huge white teeth, was extremely friendly and a bit loud, and he literally carried a bucket of peanut butter with him because he said that was the most efficient way to carry energy for his travel. I was an intern at a software company that had just got bought by a huge American company. One time, some executives were visiting, walked through our office complimenting all the developers loudly and then disappeared again. My general impression of Americans I've met in person is that it's difficult to see what you guys really think and feel because you seem to hide it behind a layer of aggressive cheerfulness. So when I see someone radiating that, I expect them to be from the US. Extremely white bleached teeth. Someone asked if I was American in a group setting, and someone spoke before me and said, of course, look at his teeth, most Americans get braces. And I was like, well, crap. How's your day going? Or how are you doing? In complete random circumstances. The thing is usually, it's more of a greeting as opposed to an actual question that you're expected to answer. I didn't realize people weren't usually expecting an answer. I feel stupid for actually giving an honest answer. Having a private conversation that everyone within 20 meters can hear. They leave a tip. I did this once while I was in Austria, and I thought I committed a crime the way the server and my uncle looked at me. That was just hyperbole. What I should have said was that they were shocked or surprised. Usually the norm is 15 to 20 percent, so that's what I gave. The server was great. Austria was great. This makes zero sense to me. I grew up in Austria and tipping here is absolutely normal. It's not mandatory as in the US, maybe, but it's totally fine and normal to tip, especially to round up. The waiter looking at you like you committed a crime is normal though. That's just how they look. I think they are generally friendly. People are easy to talk to, accessible and welcoming. Would love to visit America. There's something quite old fashioned about the type I am speaking about. Hospitable, warm and helpful. Water, water bottle is how I say it. Dunno in all context, but Americans in Europe stand out with their ceaseless optimism and enthusiasm. I'm reminded a lot of Ted Lasso. Everyone I know, all Americans, love the show. I wonder what kind of European fan base it has. While visiting Turkey, I was told that I looked American because I was sitting with one leg across the other and the bottom of my shoe was exposed. Apparently it's rude. I'm literally sitting this way right now. Well, crap. Using month, day, year. As an American who has lived overseas, I can immediately pick out Americans in a crowd by how they pronounce their letter R. It's such a hard sound, it sticks out like a sore thumb. If it's a hard R, they're from the South. Very amenable to socializing with strangers in settings like bars. Assertive, fair, and curious will get your back without knowing you too well. I've had positive experiences. Making sure you've got your homies' backs, even if they're new homies, is a big thing in our culture, I guess. You ask where they're from, and they start giving you percentages. Ask where they're from, and they give you a small town like Maumee, Ohio, and expect everyone to know where that is. Claiming that they don't have an accent when literally everybody has an accent. You get this in the UK, too. People with a standard Southern English accent often think they don't have an accent. Not caring what I wear or look like when I go out. I heard recently that Europeans don't go out of their house in their pajamas. 
Not sure if that's true or not, but it seems like it would be an American thing not to care if you look like crap. The accent. This. When I moved to America, I was like, they sound like how they are in movies. I had no idea that was American's real accent. I really like it though. We had some French students live with us and they said everything was just like the movies, which really surprised me. Three fingers versus two fingers, one thumb. Fun fact, two fingers and one thumb is how you say three in ASL, as the three fingers with the thumb touching the pinky are for six. If they introduce themselves with the state that they're from instead of saying USA. To be fair, either way is an obvious way to know if they're American. I don't see how one goes over the other. I'm from America. Didn't say their state, must be lying. Crew socks. Crew socks in white running shoes, khaki cargo shorts, polo shirt, and baseball cap. The typical American tourist traveling Europe after retirement. They pronounce Z like Z and not Z. I heard a BBC report once about the rock band ZZ Top, and it was the funniest damn thing. Definitely the wit. I'm Asian, and I've talked to many Americans, and one thing I've noticed about them is their sense of humor. I also watch a lot of American movies, and have seen many humorous videos and memes from them, which is one of my favorite things ever. They're hilarious. My brother-in-law moved to China to teach English a couple of years ago. Since he's been there, he has learned to speak the local dialect pretty fluently. We were talking about this, and he mentioned that there wasn't really sarcasm with regard to tone or words. I thought it was interesting, so I appreciate your perspective. Having the expectation that public toilets are free. Visiting Europe. My wife's an American. We live in the UK. She is an American surrounded by 67 million foreigners. To be fair, that's how British people act and feel in other countries as well. Source used to work in an ultra touristy town. Every single American expat I met while working abroad was the nicest person and great at conversation. Having a massive amount of student loan debt while they work at Starbucks. If someone asks how far away something is, an American will tell you how long it takes to get there as opposed to a physical distance. You'll always hear an American before you see them. When eating, we switch the knife to our right hand for cutting. I went on a trip to Europe once to meet an old online friend who pointed this out to me, and sure enough, no one else in the restaurant did this. Now it's obvious, but before that, I'd never given it a second thought. Wearing shorts and a hoodie when it's less than 32 degrees Fahrenheit outside. In Europe, being afraid to go to the ER or doctors anticipating a massive bill, even after you try to convince them it's basically free. They're wondering why everyone is speaking German in Germany. I wish I was making that up. It's called soccer. They don't know the 24 hour clock or meters slash meters, or for the first point, they call it military time. Ask, so what do you do? Right after meeting someone, not a faux pas or anything, just something that seems to be more important to Americans. Carrying a refillable water bottle around, especially if they're college aged. Being scared of hospitals. Real Americans don't visit hospitals. We just die 20 years too early. When they're in another country on vacation, business, etc., when a local asks them where they're from, they say their state instead of their country. I'm sorry, but not many people in Brazil know what a Delaware is. They treat people who recently immigrated to the United States and become citizens as fellow Americans. Wearing outside shoes in their house. This is very inconsistent in the US. Using imperial units. They ask for ranch. Being able to talk about racism and not sweep it under the rug. Treating working a ton of hours per week for little to no additional income as a flex. Gleaming white teeth using the words restroom, sneakers, and soda. Assuming something is about America on the internet because it isn't declared otherwise. Accent. They talk loudly, always tip, spell, and casual clothes. Not wearing speedos at the beach. And for this, I'd like to thank American men. When they sound like someone who is trying to sell me something. I love you guys though, please don't downvote me. I'm an American and this is totally true. I never realized it until now. Getting on a first name basis with someone as soon as you meet them. 
Americans are a lot more informal compared to some other nations, especially in how they address people. They think the world's most common name is John or Steve. I mean, there are a lot of variations of John, like Juan in Spanish, Johan in German, Jean in French, and a few more. It's a popular name, it just has a lot of variation, all of them being fairly popular in their respective country. Posture Americans are taught to stand up straight, shoulders back, chest out, like they've just marched off a military recruitment poster. As an American, I found the easiest way to be taken for a native when traveling was to stoop a little. They're using all their time off to spend this week in your country. Not holding two utensils while they eat, i.e. fork and knife, versus fork only, is using the side of the fork to cut anything that you can, an American thing? I always thought it was worldwide. Use the fork to cut everything, until I can't, then it's right hand knife mode time. Never thought twice about it. Pass the salt, please. I'm 25% British, 20% German, and 55% Italian. No, mate, you're American. When they type should of instead of should have. Being monolingual. Their communication skills tend to be above average, I have found. Well, at least in Australia when I meet them. Ignorance of the rest of the world and their place in it. Our place is at the top, crapping on everyone else. We got that down, bro. What are you talking about? They are defensive when you criticize their country. Is anyone not defensive when you come after their country? When they speak, you hear an eagle in the background. Unearned sense of superiority. Complaints about Mexican emigration, yet can't get enough of the tacos. Carefree personality. They open the door for the people behind them. The way we butcher foreign languages. Whenever I tried to order in German at restaurants in Germany, they would just respond in English. Kind of sucked because I really wanted a chance to apply what I had been learning in school. Using bizarrely flavored creamer in their coffee instead of just milk or having it black. Just a dash of my pumpkin cinnamon swirl Oreo crunch creamer. No geography. Real quote. Where's Brazil? I think it's in Africa, right? Yeah, that's not an American trait. That's an uneducated trait for people around the world. So what do you do for a living? Americans are obsessed with work and their self-identity as their positions. I don't see that question relating to identity. I see it as an icebreaker question. Private property is such a serious matter, even over the smallest and most unimportant things. Sometimes it looks like a religious thing. Life, liberty, and property. Not necessarily in that order. They love freedom and want to share that amazing gift with everyone they encounter, usually by force. Subsidizing half the world's national defense budget with our tax dollars and getting crapped on for not having free healthcare is a pretty solid giveaway. Someone with a presidential campaign sign in their front yard. I think it's pretty obvious. You're in America when you see that though? I was at a hostel once trying to make plans with a bunch of other tourists. We had a few options we couldn't decide between, so I said we should just pull the trigger and decide. Needless to say, I got roasted for it. Of course, an American would have common vernacular of shooting guns. Definitely never thought much about the phrase until then. Giant personal space bubbles. They don't add the letter U to every word like a godless heathen. I'm from, insert state, city, county, as if the rest of the world has nothing better to do than study American geography and maps. No, I don't know where SoCal is or what it means. Why can't you just say your country is like the rest of the world? Because our states are bigger than most countries? Attractive, intelligent, good personality. Trying to pay with US dollars abroad. Because they say fries, not chips, or chips instead of crisps. UK here. I went to an airsoft gun range in Japan with a Japanese friend. When the instructor handed us the guns, he looked at me and said, You must be American, right? I never need to tell an American how to safely hold a gun. Yeah, no. No, yeah. How they spell the word color. It was an easy way to remind the British that we no longer need you. Can't believe this is the first time I'm hearing this. Not giving a crap what foreigners think of them. Soda cups half filled with ice. 
They talk to total strangers in a queue. When you ask if they're American and they say, yes, I am American. Pretty much every one of these answers could be applied to Canadians as well. Cheese on everything. Suing. I returned to Canada after a visit to the US and said I'd sue. My roommate said I was Americanized so quickly. It's the most litigious country in the world, I think. If she likes it because we just don't eat, and we're socially relevant and so intelligent. Also, if she says, I've got to fix my teeth. As an American living outside the US, I can usually pinpoint an American by their mannerisms. The way we eat our food, the way they walk, how early in the day we like to have dinner. Often Europeans like having dinner from 7 p.m. on, but we like to eat earlier. Pronouns in their bio. They microwave water to make tea. When they hear your Australian accent and ask if you're from Britain. Generous in many ways when needed. They are debating whether to pay for food, rent, or insulin, but can't afford two of those. I know a girl who is an American. The only American person I know, so maybe it's not accurate, but she laughs at everything and is so expressive. You get the feeling that every story you tell is the best one she has ever heard of. Wears shoes indoors. I remember going on vacation to Italy and seeing a family fully decked out in red, white, and blue flag clothing. I understand this is a way to recognize lost family members on vacation, but come on. Did I also mention that they were all fat? Christ, that has got to be the most stereotypical crap ever. Are you sure you aren't on the Truman Show? I've been told peanut butter on apples is American. Also, where are you really from? Only Americans ask that. Apparently, when I speak Spanish, apparently I have an American accent. I don't even know what that means. They have a beautiful swagger and are generally excellent. Here's me realizing I do not fit in well with American culture, despite living here my whole life. An obvious sign that you aren't American is assuming all Americans are the same and that there's actually an answer to this question. I live in Australia and people always ask me which state I'm from, and I'll tell them the greatest US state of them all, Canada. The smell of deodorant. For dudes, it's being circumcised. If a dude is circumcised, they are usually American or Jewish. Also bragging about overworking slash not being well rested. I'm from Eastern Europe and I worked two years in Rhode Island and traveled to New York, Vegas, and LA. I don't like small talking, but my brother does. Americans have something wholesome when they hit you with, hi there, how are ya? Or the unpredictable, hello, you get when you are strolling on a trail and meet each other. I've started spreading involuntary wholesomeness like all the great people I've met in the US. Usually great teeth and great smiles all the time. Thinking white and black racism is the most prominent form of racism. They ask, how are you? But I guess you're not supposed to answer. It's like saying hello. You're just supposed to respond, I'm good, how are you? And then they say, good, and the ritual is complete. Thanks for watching until the end. Hi, how are you? If you're watching this and you're not American and you have something you'd like to add, please do so in the comments below. It's pretty interesting. We'd love to see what you say. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you know when our next video is available. For more videos like this one right now, please stop by our channel. Thanks again, and see you next time!